What is up everyone, Nick here, and today in part three of this tutorial series, I'm gonna show you guys how to motorize your very own Iron Man helmet. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to be covering how to code your very own microcontroller using Crashworks 3D, and we're also going to be covering how to do the wiring and the soldering. So you might be wondering, what is a microcontroller? Basically, in its simplest terms, a microcontroller is a very simple computer. You're not exactly gonna be able to play Minecraft on this thing, but you are going to be able to run simple code, which is what we're going to be using for this helmet. Now here's where things get interesting. A lot of tutorials already exist online for motorizing Iron Man helmets, and for the most part, they all use Arduino Nanos. Even the Alicia boards are basically breakout boards for Arduino Nanos. However, not all Alicia boards use Arduino Nanos. The Alicia Mini by Crashworks 3D uses an ATtiny85 USB board. Now why would we use something like this? Well, for starters, the ATtiny board is quite a bit smaller than your average Arduino Nano board. Now there are downsides to this. You don't have as many pins on this, which means you can't control as many things. But thanks to its small size, this would be perfect for operating just a simple helmet. Personally, I really like making my helmets independent from my suit. It just makes it easier to put on and take off while I'm wearing the suit. And it also allows me to show it off to people independently from the rest of the suit. Basically, that's a long-winded way of telling you guys that today we're going to be working with an ATtiny85 board. It's a little bit more tricky to set up than an Arduino Nano, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be using Arduino IDE to upload the code onto our microcontroller, so make sure you have that installed on your computer. The first thing we have to do is add the board in the device manager. Unfortunately, Arduino IDE doesn't natively have this board, so we need to install it ourselves. It's not that difficult, actually. It's as simple as opening our preferences on Arduino IDE and clicking on the additional device manager tab and then copying and pasting the link that I'll leave in the description. By clicking on done, that will basically upload upload the board onto Arduino IDE. So you'll see there's a tab at the top where we select our board. We click on that, select other board and port, and then you just need to type in Digispark. The one we're going to be selecting is Digispark, default 16.5 megahertz. Click on OK, click on Tools, and we're also going to be selecting Micronucleus in the programmer. Next up, we also need to install the drivers for this thing. This next step is optional, but you might need to install the drivers for this board onto your computer. So there's a link in the description to how to do that in case the next steps don't work for you. Now, the very last step we need to do before we can actually start uploading the code for our helmet onto this thing is uploading the start code. Now, I've had this really weird issue with my DigiSpark boards where I connect it to my computer and it constantly makes the sound of connecting and disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting and I can't upload code to it. Well, here's the solution to that. Once again, I have a link in the description to the code you're going to need for this. We're going to be using the Digispark example code called start. You might have it on Arduino IDE already, you might not, but in any case, you'll have the code in the description. All you have to do is copy and paste that code into Arduino IDE, plug in your ATtiny board to your computer, and click on upload using programmer. And if that uploads correctly, you should be able to upload your helmet code to this, no problem. Now it's finally time to download all the libraries and the code we're going to need for this thing on Crashworks GitHub page. So as you can see, we have everything we'll need listed right here. So if we click on code and download as zip, GitHub will make us one nice zip file with everything in it. Once downloaded, we just need to drag this onto our desktop and unzip the file. So I'll just drag this here and now I can delete the zip file. Now all we have to do is open this folder here and we'll find the .ino file for the code. So we're basically ready to upload our code, but first let's check out the config.h files first. Basically the text here is all the configurations and parameters we want to set for the helmet, which includes the speed of the servos, when the helmet opens, when it closes, and a bunch of other neat stuff. So if you wanna make modifications to the code, this is where most of the work will be done. Also take note of all the different pin connections for all of our different things like our servos and whatnot because we're going to need to know these things when wiring our connectors to the board itself. So servo 1 is connected to pin 0, servo 2 is connected to pin 1, and so on and so forth. And with that said, let me just grab my USB cable, plug that to the Digispark, plug that to the computer, make sure you have the correct port selected if you need to select it. This light should turn on. And now we'll just click on upload. So it's compiling the sketch right now, still uploading. Oh, done uploading, voila. So now we have our code on our board and we're basically ready to wire this thing. So let me show you a diagram so I can explain to you what we're going to be doing exactly. 
So I made a cute little diagram for you guys, and essentially all of these connectors here, so servo one, servo two, switch, I left, I right, and power, all of these are going to connect to our board right here. So these two are going to be JR connectors because that's what we need to connect to our servo motors. But the rest of these connectors here can be whatever you want. They can be JST connectors of any kind. It doesn't really matter. So basically the wiring of all this boils down to three different categories. We have all the wires going to ground, which is our negative. We have all the wires going to the positive. And then we have all the wires that go to a pin on our board right here. So it doesn't really matter which order you do these or which connects to which, as long as all your grounds connect together, they all meet into one nice connection, just like this, into one wire. Because sadly on this board, we only have one ground pin. We don't have two like you would on the Arduino Nano. All of our wires need to meet up like this so we can connect it to here. And the same idea for the positive. So in this case, we only have the five volt coming from our battery pack and we have the power for our servos. So these three can all meet and connect here at the voltage input pin. So all of these go here like so, boom. And then whatever's left, you see I added numbers here. Those are going to go to the pins. So servo one goes to zero, servo two goes to one, the switch goes to two, I left goes to three, and then I right goes to four. So those are just three categories. You have to combine all your grounds, all your positives, and then whichever wire goes to whichever pin. It's that simple. Uh, trust me, it makes, it makes sense. It makes sense right here, right in the noggin. Just, just follow my lead, everything will be fine. I just took the time to lay all the tools and hardware we're going to be using. This is everything we're going to need to motorize this Iron Man helmet. So we have our servos, we also have the eye lenses right here. We have the button switch, which is what's going to activate the faceplate, making it go up and down. We also have our microcontroller that we just programmed. I also have some JST connectors right here. I also have a USB cable, which is going to power everything. This is going to connect to a power bank that we're gonna have in the helmet. And the rest of this stuff is all of our tools. So I have my soldering iron. I have a pair of helping hands to help me solder. I have some solder and I also have a crimping tool. This thing is gonna help us crimp wires for these JST connectors. That way we don't have to solder nearly as much. You can totally buy wires that are pre-crimped and you just have to add the wires to the connectors, like these ones over here. That's why the wires are blue and white. It's because I had no red and black left. But besides that, I also have a pair of snips in case we need them and some shrink tube. So I think we're ready to get started. I think the very first thing we're gonna do is solder all of the negative leads that are gonna go to the ground on the microcontroller. Okie dokie, so let me just move this away, grab some of these, um, let's see here. So I think for the connectors we're going to do these in pairs of two, so we're going to combine these two, these two, and these two together, and then they're all going to come together into this one lead which is going to go to the ground. So I just stripped these two negative leads, we're going to get them nice and close together, and we're just going to twist this wire together before we solder it together. Just like so, looking good. Make sure you get your solder flowing all around the wire. We don't want any visible wire, but we also don't want too much solder on this thing because I just put way too much. There we go, that's looking good. So all of the negative leads on our connectors have been soldered together in pairs, and now we're gonna solder these together. So that's one done. Well, let's do the rest. And there you have it. All of our negative leads that go to ground have all been soldered together. And now this little point right here, that's what's gonna go to the ground on our board. And next up, we have to solder up the three leads that are going to go to the voltage input pin. So the two for the servos and the one that goes to the power bank. So you'll notice that the one that's going to the power bank, since I'm doing three wires together instead of two, this one I stripped extra long, that way it can coil around this one. And some more shrink tube on that. So now we have all the leads going to ground and we have all the leads going to voltage input. So all that's left is soldering all of these wires to the board. So the very first thing we're gonna do is add tin to the pins on the board that we're gonna be using. So voltage input, ground, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4. So let's start with the ground first. So this one's gonna go right here. 
sink right in. That was beautiful. Then we got our voltage input wire, which is gonna go right here. Sink right in. So for the switch, I already took the liberty of cutting off the normally closed tab. We're not gonna be needing it for this. Essentially, we're going to be soldering the wire that's coming from pin two to this communication tab, and then we're going to be soldering a negative from this normally open tab. So I just got some 22 gauge wire. We're going to be soldering the red to the communication tab, and this is gonna go back to pin two, and the black is, of course, going to be our ground. Cool, so now we can cut this as long as we want. So I just set all my soldering stuff aside because for the rest of this, we're actually going to be crimping our wires and making our own connectors. Okay, so these are the crimps themselves. These are gonna go around the wire and it's gonna like clasp around them really, really tight. And then we can take those crimps and plug them into the teeny tiny connectors. One eternity later. So that was absolutely awful. So this was the first time I've ever actually crimped my own connectors and I gotta say, that was rough. <laughs> Especially since these are JST PH connectors, so they're fairly small, they only have a two millimeter distance between each pin. They are absolutely microscopic. These things are literally the size of grains of rice and this is the tool I'm using to crimp them. This is not enjoyable. This is not a good time. <laughs> but for the sake of transparency, I did all the rest. The only one that's left to do is this one eye. So we're gonna do it together. So I've tried a million different ways of getting these things on and this is the way that works best for me personally. Basically, I take the crimp itself, I bend some of the teeth slightly and then my wire, which is already stripped, I slide it between the teeth and hopefully, since I already bent them, there should be a little bit of tension, that way it holds onto the wire. This way, I can slide it into the crimping tool without the crimp falling off. But I'm rarely able to get all four of the little prongs to sit onto the wire. So basically, I'll take my pliers and just slowly bend them around the wire. That way, when I go to use my crimping tool, they actually bend over the wire. There we go. In the crimping tool again. And you want the end that's actually going to be connecting to the connector out because we don't want to smush that part. That part's really important. So keep that exposed from your crimping tool. And there we go. So all four are bent. They're all locked around the wire. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So just make sure that we're putting it in the right direction. I like to put my connector in the other one and just check on the other side what the wires are. That way I can put red to red, black to black and whatnot. So positive is gonna go on this end. So let's slide it in. And then there's only one hole left. That's where this is gonna go live. Let's slide this in and there we go. And with that said, the only thing we have left to do is test this out. So let me go grab a battery pack. Battery pack acquired. So here's the USB. Let's plug her right in and we have a light and nothing is happening right now. Oh, the servos just moved and this is lighting up, nice. So if I press on this, both servos move, that's the open, press on it again, that closes. So usually this would be the end of the video tutorial, but we're not quite done yet. You see, I'm a really big fan of the plug and play nature of the Alicia boards by Crashworks 3D. So I thought I would make my very own. Oh yeah, you heard me. I made my very own PCB boards. And that would be thanks to this channel sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in PCB prototyping, and you can get an instant quote just by entering your specifications on their website. Once you've uploaded your Gerber files, you can expect to have your PCB done in just a few days. And speaking of which, here's the PCB I made for today's project. This is very similar to an Alicia mini board, but it doesn't have nearly as many plugs, and it has a much smaller form factor because of it. And on top of that, my PCB has an arc reactor on it, and it says Plentiful Props 3D, so that's worth the price of admission right there. 
Oh, and on top of that, PCBWay has really good prices when it comes to their PCBs. You can get 10 of these for only like 30 ish dollars plus the shipping. So for $30, you can skip all of this wiring and basically have all the wiring built into your PCB. To be clear, I designed my own PCB and the schematic for all the connectors and whatnot is basically identical to what we did today. So if you want a tutorial on how to make your own PCB schematics, please let me know in the comments down below. So how about we start soldering the connectors on this thing? And through the magic of editing, I got a haircut, got some fresh clothes, ready to solder this thing, so let's go. <sighs> I don't know where to start. I think what we're gonna do is work our way from the center and towards the edges, which means we're gonna start with the soldering of the board first. Okay, next up, we're going to be soldering the uh, connectors on here. So let's go one at a time. And there you have it. So now all the connectors have been soldered on and we're ready to try this thing out. So now it's finally time to test this thing out. So we're gonna take all the accessories we crimped earlier and we're gonna plug it to the board and we're gonna see if it works. Switch is gonna go to the switch connector. Where is it? There it is. Plug that thing in. And then we have the eyes. They're gonna go to this plug right here. Okay, let me just slide this down. Plug this into the power bank and let's see if we have any power. Light just came on. So we have our board right here, switch is here. Click it, both servos turn, lights turn off. I click it again, servos turn, lights come on. So yeah, this whole thing works. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> and of course it's quite a bit cleaner than this right here with all the dangling little wires. Needless to say, I'm pretty stoked with the results we got today. You can bet that I'm gonna be using PCBs way more now in so many other projects. So if you have any questions or video suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. So in the final part of the series, we're going to be painting our Iron Man helmet and doing the final installation of the electronics. So if you don't wanna miss out on that video, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.